So two important ideas for us to get really clear right now are intersection and union. <clears throat> the intersection symbol looks like this. It is the same thing as the word and. So when we talk about the intersection of two things, we're talking about being both of them. So in this picture where I have A and B, the intersection is that region right there overlapping them, A and B. Now union on the other hand, we use this symbol and that equates to the word or. A or B. Now this is not the or that we use in day-to-day -day language. In day-to-day -day language, the word or means exclusive. If your mother says you can have ice cream or cake, she means one of them. Ice cream, not cake, or cake, not ice cream. But if you like to eat, like I like to eat, then you want to be a mathematician and use an inclusive or, because an inclusive or means one but not the other, or the other but not the first, or both. See, when a mathematician says, I'm going to have cake or ice cream, they can have both. And they've still had cake or ice cream, because you just need one of them to say that you had one or the other. So that is the symbol or. Now, there are two formulas you need to know for these, one for each. The formula for intersection we've mentioned before, the probability of A and B is the probability of A times the probability of B provided that A happens. Probability of B provided that A happens. And we're going to do a hands-on example of that in just a minute. Probability of A or B. Probability of A or B. Now this one's a little bit tricky. It's the probability of A, which I'm going to highlight here in green. That's everything in that green circle, plus the probability of B, which I'm going to highlight here in pink, now when you look at that carefully you'll notice this section was covered in green and in pink. We've counted it twice. That's no good. So we have to subtract off the extra piece. We've counted this piece twice, so we need to subtract it off once because it was counted one time too many. And this extra piece is the intersection. So take away the probability of A and B. So that's how you find the two. Now, that can be a little tricky to wrap your head around, so let's do an example. So I'm going to pull an example that we've talked about before. Suppose here we are in Houston, there is a 0.21 chance that it is raining. Probability of rain equals 0.21. And I'm going to put those numbers back in a minute. Let's suppose that there is a chance I brought an umbrella, probability umbrella is 0.18. Because a lot of times when it's raining, I, I don't even notice. I just, I'm not really a person who cares a lot about rain. So even, you know, so then there's some overlap in there. And we're going to talk about that overlap in just a minute. probability that it is raining, excuse me, I said that backwards, probability that I brought my umbrella, provided that it is raining, is 5 over 7, 5 over 7. 
and I could get a decimal on that, I probably should. 5 divided 7 is 0 0.7143. Okay, so now suppose I'm going to fill in this diagram. Well, remember, as we've discussed before, this 0.21 goes to this entire circle, both pieces. And this 0.18 goes to this entire circle, both pieces. So I need to find out how big that piece in the middle is. So that piece in the middle is the intersection. So first thing I'm going to do, I want to find the probability that it is raining and I brought my umbrella. So using the formula we discussed, that is the probability that it's raining times the probability that I brought my umbrella provided you knew it was raining. So the probability that it is raining and I brought my umbrella is 0.21 probability that it's raining times 0.7143 the probability that it's raining, that it, I brought my umbrella when you know it's raining, and multiplying those together gives us 0.15. Probability that it is raining and I brought my umbrella is 0.15. So I now know that this little overlapping region right there, 0.15. And then I could subtract to find the other regions. 0.21 minus 0.15 tells me that this part is 0 0.06. 0 0.18 minus 0.15 tells me that this part is 0 0.03. And if I add these together, I've got 0.21 plus 0 0.03 is 0.24. And so this region out here is 0 0.76. That's not raining and I didn't bring an umbrella. Now, what if I wanted to get the union? I want to know the probability that it is raining or I brought my umbrella. Probability that it's raining or I brought my umbrella. Well, then going back to that formula, that's the probability that it's raining plus the probability I brought my umbrella but I've counted this overlapping part twice, right? Probability that it's raining plus probability that I brought my umbrella. I've counted that part twice, so I have to subtract it off minus the probability that it is raining and I brought my umbrella. So the probability that it is raining or I brought my umbrella is 0.21 probability that it's raining plus 0.18 probability that I brought my umbrella minus 0.15, the probability of both. So the probability that it is raining or I brought my umbrella, 0.21 plus 0.18 minus 0.15 is 0.24. And so that's the chance that it is raining or I brought my umbrella or both. Because remember, we're using the mathematical inclusive or, one or the other or both. And now once you've got that under your belt, you can try a few.